December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Yet the reasoning that it would live in infamy would be profoundly different for Japanese Americans. Ex parte endo, a journey toward justice for Japanese Americans. In response to Pearl Harbor, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt had warned the nation that it would be the greatest test this country has ever met. If we cannot meet the challenge of fairness to our citizens of every nationality, then we shall have removed the one real hope for the future on which all humanity must now rely. Unfortunately, counter to Eleanor Roosevelt's warning, anti-Japanese American sentiment was spreading like a wildfire. Many people began to advocate for internment. Idaho Attorney General Burt Miller declared that all Japanese must be in concentration camps for the remainder of the war. We want to keep this a white man's country. Yet secretly, evacuation had already been taking place. Within 48 hours of Pearl Harbor, over 1,200 Japanese American community leaders had been arrested by the FBI. No charges were filed. President Roosevelt was under immense pressure from Chief of the Western Defense Command, General John DeWitt. With help from lawyer Carl Bendetson, DeWitt wrote a report to the Secretary of War urging the evacuation of all Japanese Americans from the West Coast. In the report, he declared, the very fact that no sabotage has taken place to date is a disturbing and confirming indication that such action will be taken. After DeWitt's report was approved by the War Department, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066 on February 19, 1942. The order allowed the Army to designate military areas from which any persons may be excluded. This led to the relocation and internment of over 120,000 Japanese Americans. Yet one of these individuals who was detained would become an important leader in the quest to have Japanese American civil liberties recognized and respected. Mitsuye Endo was born in Sacramento, California in 1920. She was fired from her job at the Department of Employment after Pearl Harbor. Then, after Executive Order 9066 was signed, she was sent to the Walerga Assembly Center in Sacramento. James Purcell, a lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union, had visited Tanfer and Assembly Center in 1942. He was disgusted that families were forced to live in poor stalls and was determined to bring a habeas corpus lawsuit against internment. He sent out questionnaires to Japanese Americans who had been fired from their jobs as state employees. Purcell selected Endo because she had a brother serving in the army and she was a citizen. Yet most important to Purcell was Endo's decision to remain at the relocation center. The war relocation authorities moved to try to get Endo to drop her case had failed and highlighted Endo's bravery and resilience. Yet her decision to remain was only the beginning of her important journey for justice. First, Endo took her case to the district court where her petition was dismissed without explanation. Purcell appealed this decision, but the Court of Appeals opted not to decide on her case and sent it to the Supreme Court for consideration. While Endo was battling for a writ of habeas corpus, two other cases brought to the Supreme Court by Japanese Americans had been decided. On February 4, 1942, the Army had imposed travel restrictions and a curfew upon Japanese Americans on the West Coast. Minoru Yasui was outraged by these orders, so he marched to the police station in Portland after curfew and demanded to be arrested. After losing his case at the district court, he was fined, sent to prison, and placed in solitary confinement for nine months. His appeal was deferred to the Supreme Court. The court ruled unanimously against him on June 21, 1943. Hirabayashi v. United States was argued as a companion case to Yasui v. United States. Gordon Hirabayashi had decided to resist curfew orders, and when relocation was announced, he defiantly turned himself in to the FBI. He was sentenced to 90 days in prison. He appealed his case all the way up to the Supreme Court, where similar to Yasui, he lost in a 9-0 ruling. The Supreme Court decided also to hear a companion case to Endo's, similar to the Yasui and Hirabayashi cases. Yet those decisions made an Endo victory look improbable. After the exclusion order was issued, Fred Korematsu did not report, assumed an alias, and had minor plastic surgery in an attempt to avoid being sent to an internment camp. 
but he was eventually found and arrested. While in San Francisco County Jail, Korematsu was approached by Ernest Bessig of the American Civil Liberties Union, who wished to utilize Korematsu to test the constitutionality of internment. When asked of his decision to challenge the exclusion order, Korematsu said, I didn't feel guilty because I didn't do anything wrong. Every day in school we said the pledge of the flag, with liberty and justice for all. And I believed all that. I was an American citizen, and I had as many rights as anyone else. Yet on September 8, 1942, Korematsu was found guilty by the district court and sentenced to five years probation. He appealed his case, but his guilty decision was upheld, so he then appealed to the Supreme Court. On December 18, 1944, the Supreme Court ruled 6-3 against Korematsu, stating that, Korematsu was not excluded from the military area because of hostility to him or his race. He was excluded because we are at war with the Japanese Empire. The military urgency of the situation demanded that all citizens of Japanese ancestry be segregated from the West Coast temporarily. Korematsu's decision was announced right before Endo's. Purcell had argued in Ex Parte Endo by proclaiming that her detention was illegal due to the length of time she had been detained without charges filed the lack of due process during the evacuation, in violation of the 14th Amendment, which prohibits any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Surprisingly, the Supreme Court ruled unanimously in Endo's favor, thus officially ending the internment of loyal Japanese Americans. Justice William Douglas delivered the opinion of the court and declared that the War Relocation Authority had no authority to subject citizens who are conceitedly loyal to its leave procedure. Yet Justice Frank Murphy went even further in his concurring opinion and stated that, Detention in relocation centers of persons of Japanese ancestry, regardless of loyalty, is not only unauthorized by Congress or the executive, but is another example of the unconstitutional resort to racism inherent in the entire evacuation program. Although Mitsue Endo won her freedom and the freedom of thousands of other Japanese Americans, the ruling was not a complete victory. The court refused to rule on the constitutionality of internment and only declared to release conceitedly loyal Japanese Americans. The last of the internment camps, the Thule Lake Segregation Center for those deemed disloyal, did not close until March 20th, 1946. There are virtually no cases where the United States Supreme Court has directly opposed decisions of the United States military. Then you get to Endo's case, and what you're dealing with is an individual exception that's much easier for them to accept. Nevertheless, Mitsuye Endo's bravery in standing up for the rights of Japanese Americans is a bright spot in a dark period of our nation's history. Her actions in taking a stand for what is right prove her importance as a role model to all Americans. Yet Endo's victory did not signal the end of the journey toward justice. After evidence was found in the 1980s that the government had withheld evidence in the Yasui, Hirabayashi, and Korematsu cases, the three plaintiffs decided to petition for a writ of error quorum nobis. Korematsu and Hirabayashi's convictions and petitions were granted. Likewise, Yasui's conviction was overturned, but his petition was denied. He appealed this decision, but died before the issue could be heard before the court. Furthermore, presidents would take a stand in addressing these grave wrongs. In 1976, President Gerald Ford said, We now know what we should have known then. Not only that evacuation was wrong, but Japanese Americans were and are loyal Americans. Then, President Ronald Reagan issued the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, which included a formal apology for the evacuation and payments of $20,000 to camp survivors. Additionally, Korematsu, Hirabayashi, and Yasui were awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1998, 2012, and 2015, respectively. Mitsuye Endo died in 2006 and has not yet received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Endo was crucial in the journey toward justice. She was the only plaintiff to win her case, and her victory truly started the process of ending internment. 
Furthermore, she forced the government to begin to recognize the unconstitutionality of their actions. Yet for all of her heroism, she has been largely overlooked. Many people think Korematsu is the internment case when it definitely was not, and Endo was. Endo deserves to be recognized as a hero. To achieve this status, some have argued for Endo to posthumously receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom, like U.S. Senator Brian Schatz, who wrote a letter to President Obama which stated, Her story exemplifies a core American principle. We are a nation of laws where one person can stand up against an injustice and alter the course of our democracy. If you're not relentless about applying the pressure, uh, you'll be overlooked. Mitsune Endo was relentless in her journey toward justice, yet we must be relentless now in ensuring that Endo's actions are not overlooked by history. Her powerful story is a reminder of the continual pursuit of justice in America. It started with the bombing of Pearl Harbor and the subsequent decision of the government to exchange the civil rights of citizens for racism and the relocation of over 120,000 Japanese Americans to internment camps. Yet Endo bravely decided to take a stand against the injustice and became a voice for the thousands of other Japanese Americans who encountered unfair treatment in a nation that champions liberty and justice for all. In her journey for justice, she took her case, ex parte endo, all the way to the Supreme Court. The court ruled unanimously in her favor, thus officially ending the incarceration of conceitedly loyal Japanese Americans. Endo reminds us that not all heroes are rightfully recognized, but that all unsung heroes make a difference and change the world. Mitsuye Endo's fight for civil rights still continues in America today. Her journey toward justice is endless.